So there's a potential where if my brain gets to this temperature where it's like frozen, if I was to come back, it's, a, it's almost very similar technically as if I was out for three minutes. How did your father's death send you on this kind of journey figuring out the human body? Yeah, so I, when my father passed away in 2008, um, that was the first time I really dealt with a death so close to me, and that was really hard. Um, I mean, we all were there in the hospital room when he passed away. It gave me a lot of closure, but it also opened a lot of doors for me. Up until he died, I didn't really believe that he could die because my father was this invincible adventurer that literally survived more than nine lives. Even to the point when the doctor was saying, you know, we've now pronounced him gone. I'm like, there's no way he's gone. I just, my mind couldn't actually believe that he would actually leave. But yeah, after he passed away, um, I just had a lot of questions on like what, like what, what killed him? Like what is cancer, you know? Like, how do you prevent that? And like, in what if I did this? And a lot of the what ifs now came to the people I could potentially save at that moment forward, which is people I love, my mom, my, my family, my sister, my brother. So like after he died, I picked up this book called Anti-Cancer. It was all about, it's all Eastern philosophy. You know, it's more about preven prevention and preventative uh, philosophy, and I read all his other books that he wrote. This, this, this great, great doctor. Actually, I wrote to him, and I, I did that a lot. You know, if I read a book, I would write to the authors, and I would like to try to build a relationship with them and try to like learn from them and and like learn more about what I can do to share this information with people I care about. And if it's to to help you to live a longer, healthier, happier life, like I would need to read more. I need to learn more about that, and. and that led me down this path of, into nutrition, into mindfulness, and then into what I got really excited about, this world of science fiction and between science fact. So I think that the ideas that like, especially um, people like Elon Musk and, and scientists out there that are really advancing the science, those are the people I wanna know, learn, and like talk to. Brian Johnson, for example, he's the head of Colonel. He has a leading brain technology in the world. And I got to meet with him. Those people mean what as it pertains to what you're doing on the philanthropic front? Yeah, so I have a foundation, Aoki Foundation, and it's exactly this idea to, to like learn and share. And part of the sharing is funding. We're very broad when it comes to funding in the brain category. We've been doing stuff with Alzheimer's and dementia, and my passion is in what's in the future with brain technology. Where can we go to not only just optimize our lives and advance what we can do uh, with our output, with our creativity, but you know the end goal is finding a way to live forever. And that sounds kind of scary and crazy when you say that, but it's not scary and crazy when you actually start inching what that looks like. My mom's 78. I want to see her live to 120. I always say, Mom, you have another 50 more years left. You know, and I want to see her live a happy, healthy life to that point. She was telling me the other day about how you've wanted for a while uh, for her to commit to freezing her brain. And she's like, I, I, I don't want to do it. Your sister said the same thing. But explain where the Alcor Life Foundation yeah, comes so in. Alcor, Alcor uh, is a um, facility that deep freezes your body. You die, okay? So you're f like Kelvin temperature, deep, 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 cold Kelvin temperature, frozen with zero degeneration. If I'm so lucky to die in a hospital situation where they can move my whole body and quickly get my body, my brain, most importantly, into this deep Kelvin temperature. And when the technology is ready to bring me back, which I, it sounds crazy, but if there's technology to, to actually bring you back, then I could come back. But you know, it's like the, the sad thing is I don't want to come back and like my whole family's gone.
you know. That's why I'm asking my whole family, let's at least all do it together, you know. Look at it this way. People die, right? People have died and come back to life. Can you, can you agree with me on that? Yeah, sure. Like, your heart stops, and you, and they come back like, whoa, you were actually technically dead for a minute or two minutes, or whatnot. So there's a potential where if my brain gets to this temperature where it's like frozen, if I was to come back, it's, a, it's almost very similar technically as if I was out for three minutes. So that's where I'm like, where people are like, well, that's just weird. But it's not weird to bring someone back to life if they're, they die and they just come right back in three minutes, right? There's gonna be a point in time where the normal lifespan might be zero to 160. So at like 140, they're like, hey, everything's working good because we've, we've, we've changed out everything in your body now. Like we have a different heart and it's actually not even human. It's like an AI or whatever heart. These are all steps to what I believe in the future will eventually get to the point where we can, where we, we might potentially live forever in a lifetime and have that conversation be like, wow, people used to actually die that's like, that, that's, that's possible. And I, and I hope it's in our life, lifetime. So with the foundation, I want to help out researchers and orgs and people that have that same thought process that are doing real work. We got to find cures for all brain degenerative disease, period, one. Two, we got to find avenues that, that lead to the place where we can do what I'm saying, Live longer, healthier, happier lives to the point where we can live forever.